Hi everyone, uh, I'm Ethan. I'm very uh, excited to be here um, to talk about what we are building in Google uh, in a blockchain space. Uh, this is the agenda today. I'm going to talk about uh, Google Cloud uh, Web3 organization uh, and the blockchain node engine, our product. Uh, then we're going to dive into a little bit to the features and the technology and uh, what we believe the future uh, for the infra. For people who don't know me, um, I'm an engineering lead uh, in Google uh, Cloud Web3. I primarily uh, lead on the blockchain node engine. Uh, previously, I'm a founding member uh, in uh, Facebook Libra. I worked on the Libra uh, storage and ledger. Thanks. All right. <laughs> All right, so uh, for Google Cloud Web3, uh, this is our mission. Uh, is to become the best option for developers and the companies building Web3 products and services. Uh, so this organization is formally formed about a year ago. So the, the problem space here is, you know, uh, as a you know, Web2 developer, you are used to a lot of the infrastructure uh, that's very reliable and, useful, uh, and very easy to use, but this is certainly not the case for the Web3 space. So, um, so we try to uh, build the reliable infra in the Web3 space to bridge the gap. A uh, little bit about uh, how we got here, um, thanks to our amazing uh, BD team and uh, strategy team. They also prepared these slides for me. Um, so the, the organization, the Web3 org, is, uh, is part of Google Cloud, is, is formed uh, around the January 2022 last year. Uh, then after that is very quickly gaining a lot of momentum uh, in the space. Uh, there's a massive announcement of blockchain node engine uh, previewing uh, third quarter in uh, 2023, uh, 2022, last year. Then shortly after we announced the uh, partnership with the Solana Foundation that we're gonna support the blockchain node engine on Solana. Then after that is our foundation partnership with the Aptos uh, Coinbase partner, uh, partnerships with uh, custodian payments. Then a little bit earlier this year in Texas, Austin, uh, we announced a an, uh, partnership with the Polygon Foundation. Uh, we're gonna support the Polygon on the blockchain node engine. So let's talk about the, this product, um, blockchain node engine. Um, so this product is, uh, is out for private preview on last year, uh, November then fully available this year, May. Uh, it's a lot of, um, get a lot of attention. Uh, all right, so what is this product? So it's a part of the blockchain node infra space. As you know, uh, in the, if you see the Web3, um, you know, blockchain, you see blockchain is basically a bunch of nodes, you know, talking to each other, fighting for a consensus, right? But on the other side, you have your web application. Usually, almost always, those are like Web2 stack. You have a web application, you have database, right? You need to connect your traffic from the Web2 into, the, into this uh, network of the, of the blockchain. You usually uh, use one of the node infra. This node infra serve as a entrance or a gateway to serve your traffic and send this traffic propagates to other nodes in the blockchain. So it's a common layer that's used for uh, pretty much all the Web3 uh, companies and startups. So today, you, there are a few options you can do this. You can either have one of the nodes yourself, but it's, it's very challenging, right? First, you have to set it up. You have to wait the node to sync up and maintaining the upgrades, monitoring, and other stuff. The reliability is uh, very painful because the reliability here is not just infra, reliability, but also your protocol uh, reliability. Sometimes the nodes get stuck for some reason, maybe because of protocol, you know, you have to deal with those, right? Uh, also the running cost and security. And there are a few other players uh, in the market, but here I'm uh, very happy to, to share uh, what is a Google uh, solution for this. So introducing this blockchain node engine, uh, right now is fully um, available right now. Um, it's a full, it's fully managed blockchain node service. It's basically a push button solution. You can, uh, you can go to the, the Google, uh, this is a PDF, so otherwise this will be a small demo over there. So you can go to your Google Cloud Console and uh, you can go to 
turn on the blockchain node engine, tap, and a couple of clicks, specify which chain you want to, want, want to be on, and like mainnet or archive node, those spe specifics, then you can you know, start, start a node. Then you have a node there. Uh, then you can forget about this node and continue using it, uh, using RPC. Uh, currently, we only support the Ethereum. Uh, we start with the Ethereum, and we are in the middle of working on Polygon and Solana. So please expect the announcement soon. Uh, for Ethereum, Ethereum, we support full nodes, archive nodes on mainnet, on testnet. You can access it through the JSON RPC, WebSocket, and also private service connect. Um, right now, it's globally available. Um, uh, available globally. However, uh, you have to pick one of the three data centers that's closest to your uh, application, which is uh, in US, East Asia, and EU regions. We do have a plan to roll out to all the other data centers that Google has. Okay, cool. All right, so let's dive into a little bit about the feature uh, and, uh, and, and the technology. So um, the blockchain node engine uh, is full of the, first is, a, is a fully managed, meaning um, we manage these nodes for you. Um, and it, it packs a lot of features. First, you can, uh, it's, it's programmatic provisioning. So this is especially useful for big companies. If you have a fleet of nodes, like hundreds of the nodes you're running, um, you can programmatically to provisioning uh, your fleet of nodes. Also, it's a fast provisioning. Uh, you know, the archive nodes for Ethereum, sometimes it takes a month uh, to sync up. So we have this uh, service, um, um, snapshot syncing service. Basically, we're maintaining uh, a service copy of each SKU of the, of the, um, of the SKU that we supported, and we validate those SKUs uh, regularly purposes. Then uh, we, 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 we store the SKU, uh, we store the snapshots in the, in the hot disk, waiting for the new nodes to pick up. When the, new, when, the nodes pick, when the nodes are provisioned, uh, those snapshots, terabytes of the data will be made a copy using a very low level uh, copy uh, functions uh, provided by our sibling team in Google. So it's really, really fast. We're able to achieve you know, provision of uh, archive node, Ethereum archive nodes within a, a couple hours. Um, we also have auto healing and uh, uh, safe restarts. Sometimes when your node is stuck for some reason or has some issues, we read the metrics and uh, we action on those metrics on your behalf. So service will kick in to do some um, kind of auto healing for you, right? Um, also, uh, we're maintaining the, the client's upgrades. We, we'll make sure if you're running one of our nodes, you will always be, always be running the, the latest version or the latest stable version with all the, all the uh, patch there. Obviously, a lot of advanced monitoring, uh, enterprise um, features like role-based access control, uh, managed API, keys, and read limits uh, to, the, to the blockchain uh, node. And uh, also, we have packed a lot of the security features, which is very important for a lot of enterprise uh, use case. So this is a good segue to, the, to talk a little bit about the technology. So being uh, part of the Google, we, have, we are very lucky we have uh, access to pretty much all the technology out there uh, in the Google Cloud. Um, we care, for example, like uh, Cloud Armor uh, DDoS protection. Those are uh, very popular features that has been better proved. So when uh, evaluating those features, we are, we are, we are very carefully right, uh, to pick the, uh, the matured uh, uh, good uh, feature uh, to pack them into the blockchain node engine so you can use them as the same way you use uh, like a, a Web2 product. First and foremost, we are a dedicated node, right? So which meaning you own, you completely have the ownership of all the hardware uh, that's running your node engine. Um, if, you are, if you are a company, you will you'll be sure that your traffic will never uh, be shared with another tenant uh, in the same hardware. Uh, so this creates a lot of good security there. Also, we rely on Google's backbone networks for edging system, edging programmatic load balancers. Uh, what happens here is Google has this private uh, networks um, across, the, across the data centers. And if you uh, use blockchain node engine, wherever you uh, color your application is, you first hitting one of the edging uh, load balancers. From there, it's kind of go on the expressway for the traffic to to, to travel to one of the, the data centers, so to achieve the super low uh, latency there. 
also they're going to have a lot of the uh, there are a lot of the enterprise grade security to name a few uh, we have a tenant management in a private runtime uh, networks so we manage your all your tenant resources on, on your behalf no one including yourself is able to access those tenant resources except using the dedicated you know endpoints so providing the maximum security also the end-to-end -end encryption using TLS, those are pretty standard these days. Private service connect, this is also a cool feature as well. So if you call her, if you call her application is already inside one of the Google's infra, for example, you're already a customer of GCP, um, then your traffic would not even, you know, would never ever needed to get to the public internet in order to achieve the, to go to the public, uh, to go to the blockchain node engine. From there, the, the payload directly you will, will be sent out to the blockchain uh, network. So um, uh, that achieves uh, a faster latency and also the uh, security as well. Cloud Armor DDoS protection supports IP based or uh, geolocation based uh, deny a service denied protection, and also test up for high throughput here. Okay, talk a little bit about the uh, the future plan for blockchain uh, node engine product. So right now it's a single dedicated uh, a node service, uh, which is you know meaning you own this node uh, for the entire entirety of the duration and. Uh, uh, it's like a buffet model. We throw out limit your QPS, then you can use as much as you want uh, over there. We don't charge per QPS. Uh, then the next step is we're going to build a multi-node cluster. So you're going to have a cluster with the load balancing, then you have multiple nodes. The next step of that is to have a pool of RPCs. So sometimes you just have, you're just very lightweight. You don't need a dedicated node. You just need a provision RPC. So you can provision a very fast RPC and, and use it there. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the future, uh, you know, about the, uh, the infra, from, from an infra, you know, pr uh, perspective, right? So if you look at the blockchain uh, from the infra perspective, I see uh, in pretty much all the blockchains basically a bunch of the nodes and a bunch of agents, you know, they talk to each other, fighting for some consensus. But if you zoom into one of the nodes, what's inside that node, right, from the infra part, it's basically a runtime a container, a Docker container, let's say. It needs some hardware, right? It needs some hardware to run. It has some, uh, it opened up some TCP traffic for the customer to send out traffics, send out, uh, um, deploy a transaction, you know, uh, deploy smart contract, some TCP traffic there. Also, you sometimes have a UDP or TCP traffic for peer-to-peer -peer connection. Um, many blockchain, they provide this backup or snapshots. You can quickly to do the sync up. Uh, right. Then lastly, the, the emits some uh, metrics. That's pretty much the only way, you know, from the infra provider to look at this blockchain to to do some action on it. So we divide all the metrics we see on the two two front. One is all the, one is actionables. So those are the metrics that we carefully, you know, looking at. We monitoring them. From those metrics, we can we can conclude that if this node is still uh, functioning and there are some action actionable, like restarting it or uh, alerting uh, out of it. The other part is the rest of the metrics, right? Those are, could, could be very different uh, across the different chains. So if, if, if you believe in this abstraction, uh, we're starting from the Ethereum, we, are, we can really um, move the, the blockchain part like out of the equation, right? So you can develop some abstraction to support the deployment automation for all the L1s and all the major L2s. So that's what the blockchain node engine, you know, right now, um, you know, its vision is we can have a chain agnostic multi-chain support. So I think this is very important because it helps like both ways. First, it helps all the blockchain protocol developers to with Google's infrastructure, you can push your blockchain into like a scale your blockchain to a global level, right? The, from the developer perspective, they don't need to worry about some specifics for the blockchain. They just use this blockchain using the same way uh, like they, they used to, um, interfacing the blockchain node engine. I think this is really powerful there. 
Um, so you can scale the protocol using infrastructure like, like utility. Uh, I think the place to be in, you know, in future is we will forget about this infra. It's like today you're using a database, like a database as a service. No one worry about how to set up a database or even like electricity. No one will worry about them anymore. And also, um, also we believe the blockchain node engine, you know, blockchain could be something like a database, right? If you think about the blockchain traffic, it's very unique here. Uh, some observation here is like all the reads, pretty much it's, it's immutable and, uh, and it also it's common between one tenant and, and another tenant. Also, the read and write traffic is drastically different. Uh, you know, those, are, those give some um, uh, advantage to further optimize uh, from the infra perspective. So TRDR, uh, I think future is managed uh, blockchain infra. Okay, uh, that was the last slide. So this is the last slide. Um, so I'm going to share a few uh, QR codes here. Uh, the first QR code is uh, um, is the blockchain node engine uh, uh, product page in the Google Cloud. And uh, please take a take a, you know take a scan. Um, you can you can give a try and study a little bit more about this blockchain uh, node engine and also our successful stories with the. Uh, customers like ENS and uh, Third Web. Um, the pricing right now is a flat, uh, regardless of the QPS and regions. Uh, uh, it costs uh, $500 a month for Ethereum uh, uh, full node and $2,000 a month for uh, archive node. The second QR code, QR code is, uh, uh, is our startup program. So if you, if you are a startup, please sign up. You can get some free credit. With that, uh, that's it. This is my uh, Telegram, and I'm happy to, uh, uh, you know, get connected. And if you have any questions about the product, uh, please connect with me um, offline. We can talk more about it. Thank you so much.